Hey everybody, Mr. Murray here, Mr. Murray's Mathland, taking a look at sinusoidal graphs today, aka graphing sine and cosine. And that that wave shape that both sine and cosine have, it's it's they're both called sinusoids or sinusoidal graphs. So anything of that shape is called sinusoidal. Um, just a couple a review of the terms before we try some. This is the basic sine of x cycle. One complete cycle takes uh, 0 to 2 pi to go through that and a cycle consists of you know one complete crest and one complete trough you know one one hill and one valley if you will uh, the basic amplitude the amplitude is the height of each wave the basic amplitude is one and an amplitude is always a positive thing because it's a distance so the depth of the trough is one the height of the crest is one the period that is the distance it takes, the horizontal distance it takes to go through one cycle, that is 2 pi. That's the, the basic period, which of course will change sometimes. And a term we're throwing around also is midline. Now the midline is normally at y equals 0. That's the horizontal line that you know cuts right through the middle of the graph. Okay, and so when we do this to the equation we start throwing numbers there there and or there these these three all affect these things so this affects the amplitude right here whatever coefficient is out in front we're multiplying that that's going to change the height of those waves so whether it's positive or negative you ignore the negative you take the absolute value of it that's the amplitude the b value you know, we just call it b, but whatever is being multiplied to that x, that's going to affect that horizontal stretch and compression of the graph if you multiply x. Um, so that's going to affect the period. Now period will always be, it's normally 2 pi, but it's going to be 2 pi divided by whatever that b is. And so the last thing uh, is if there's plus or minus a constant on the end, this is the same rule that applied to parabolas or, or any other function we've graphed this year. When you add or subtract a constant to the end, it shifts it up or down that number of units. So the midline will always be y equals whatever that value is on the end. Okay, <clears throat> we're just about ready to get started graphing these, but one thing to, to pay attention to is what we're going to use to graph these are the five key points, what I call the five key points. And that would be this, you know, where the graph starts, which for sine is right on the midline. And then we have this at the peak, at the, at the crest. And then we have this midway through the cycle, we're back on the midline. And then the fourth key point is right here at the minimum, you know, at the bottom of the trough. And right here, back to where we begin. And that, uh, you know, after that, as we said, the, the cycle is going to repeat itself if we were to zoom out. Just going to do that over and over again in both directions. So we're going to use those five key points. And just notice, every key point, they're not randomly in the middle of the graph. But it's They're right on the midline or at a, a maximum or a minimum. And they alternate. On the midline, maximum. Midline, minimum. Midline. So that's, that's all helpful stuff, but it can be a, a little overwhelming at first. So let's take a look at this problem right here. y equals 4 sine of 2x minus 1. When I approach these, I like to do a little work off to the side. And I like to first say, am I dealing with positive or negative sine? And I'm looking at that coefficient of 4. That's positive 4. So that means I'm dealing with my basic positive sine shape, starting right here and then starting with a, a crest and ending with a trough, and then ending right on the midline. Okay, that's positive sign. If it was negative sign, if that was a negative four, that would cause a reflection over the x-axis, like we've learned with all of our other shapes this year. So that would be you know starting with a trough and ending with a crest. Uh, easy stuff first, usually for, for kids. What's the amplitude? The amplitude is four. So these heights of these uh, waves are gonna be four units. What is our midline? That is y equals negative 1. That comes from that negative 1 on the end. So the entire graph is shifted down one unit. 
And what's our period? Now this is usually where most of the work comes into play here. Our period is 2 pi divided by whatever b is. And b is just what we call that, that coefficient on the inside. So when I take 2 pi, divide it by 2, I get pi. So it actually shrinks the graph horizontally. Now it will only take pi units to go through. And if you remember that, that's kind of the way functions work when you do something to the inside with the x. It kind of has the opposite effect of what you might think. I multiply by 2, that means the period actually gets divided by 2. You're actually you're going through it twice as fast if you want to think about it that way. So it only takes pi units to go through that cycle. And now the, the last thing I like to throw around is what I call the increment. And the increment is the distance between those key points. The distance between those five key points. And normally it's you know, pi over two. Every pi over two is a new key point. And that is one fourth of the period. So if my new period is pi, then my new increment is going to be pi divided by four. You take whatever the new period is and you divide it up by four. So now everything's equally spaced. And so now here we go. Let's, let's, uh, get these five key points. So again, this is just the distance between key points, but I got to know where am I starting? All of these ones are starting at zero. I'll be doing ones next week where we do phase shifts and that's when you add or subtract things to the inside with the X that will do a horizontal shift like all of our other graphs this year. And the next key point will be pi over four, that increment, that'll be that distance after zero. So the next key point will be zero plus pi over four is pi over four. The next key point after that will be another pi over four units. You just keep adding that same distance. Pi over four plus pi over four is two pi over four, which is pi over two. Add pi over four again, you get half plus a quarter is three quarters of pi. You might have to make some common denominators to do these, depending on how nasty the fractions are and how comfortable you are with that. And then of course, when I add pi over four again, I'm going to get four pi over four, which is just pi. And notice that should be the case that if the period is only pi units and I start at zero, then it should end at pi. Starting at zero, going to pi, there's my period of pi units. So that's kind of a nice way to check and you've got it all equally spaced. So here we go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my best to sketch this graph. It's just a rough sketch. I'm starting at zero. I'm just gonna spread it out. So I'm gonna call this pi down here. If I wanna get graph paper out, I, I definitely can do that. <clears throat> and roughly halfway between there, that's pi over two, that's there. And halfway between there, that's my x2. That's pi over four and halfway between pi over two and pi. That's three pi over four. Now, let's take into consideration the, the amplitude and the midline. So the midline is y equals negative one. So that means negative one, and, and you know it's up to you how you choose your scale here. I like to graph this with a dashed line. It's the, gonna be the middle of the graph. It's not really there, but it gives you a center to draw around. Now the amplitude is four units. So that means each crest is going to be four units away from the middle of the graph, four units away from the midline. So four units above that midline of negative one will go, you know, one unit up will be zero, then one, two, three. So that's gonna put you as high as positive three when you go four units up from negative one. When I go four units down from negative one, that will give you the the minimum value of the graph, that will put you down at negative five, negative one minus four. So again, this is not perfectly to scale. So that's negative two, negative three, negative four, <clears throat> negative five. Okay, now we're gonna plot our points. Our key points, we've done all the spacing and here's where they should be. So my very first point is right on the midline, that's the, the important idea here, right on the midline, so that's going to be right here. When x is zero, I'm going to be at negative one. 
when x is pi over 4, my, my second key point here that I've spaced out, I'm going to be at the maximum. So that will be 4 units above the midline, so up at that max value of 3. At pi over 2, I'm halfway through the cycle, so back on the midline. At 3 pi over 4, I'm at the minimum, so down at negative 5. And at pi, I'm back on the midline to finish. And so notice how those, those x1, x3, and x5 are all right on the midline. And you just do your best to, to draw a, you know, a nice wave graph through there. And there you go. That's a sketch of one complete cycle of the sine graph. If we want to get more accurate, we certainly can. But you can always plug points in, by the way. If you're not sure where it starts, you could take 0 plug it into the function and use your unit circle values to get out. Oh, sine of 0 is 0 times 4 minus 1 is negative 1. So 0, negative 1. You could do that for each point if you want, but once you get the routine down, you really can move through this pretty quickly. So we're going to take a look at a cosine 1 now and see how that's pretty similar. Very similar in nature. A lot of the same traits. Midline being at y equals 0. Amplitude being right here, the absolute value, period, is going to be still 2 pi over b. You know, nothing new there. What's different is the parent shape. You know, the normal cosine graph starts at a peak. It starts off of the midline, unlike sine, which starts on the midline. But then it alternates, you know, back on the midline, off, on, off. So those are the five key points for cosine. So now let's see how that plays out here. We have y equals negative 5 cosine of x over 2. So my basic shape is negative cosine. So with a negative coefficient, that's going to be a reflection of this shape over the x-axis. So now instead of starting at a peak and going down like that, it's going to start down here. If you reflect this over the x-axis, now this will be down here, and I'll be going like this. So we start at the bottom, then midline, then peak, then midline, then down. And you do your best to kind of draw the cosine shape. It's not a big V. It's supposed to be like there's your one complete crest, and you have two halves of a trough, which makes one complete trough. So it is the same. One complete trough, one complete crest, just like sine. Amplitude's going to be... 5, that's the absolute value of negative 5. That's going to be the height of the waves. The midline, midline is y equals 0. There's been no constant added or subtracted to the end. So it's going to stay centered right around the x-axis, y equals 0. The period is 2 pi divided by this coefficient. Now, that x is really being multiplied by one half. That's really a, a one in front of the x, right? So that b value is really one half. So just watch out for that. You know, so two divided by one half. You know, hopefully you can do that mentally, but if not, that really means two pi times the reciprocal of two. So this is actually going to cause a horizontal stretch. Now it's going to take four pi units to go through that uh, cycle. And that means my increment, the distance between the key points, is going to be that 4 pi, whatever the period is, but divide it up neatly into four equal spaces. So that will be pi. This actually will work out nice because there won't be any fractions. So my very first x value, first key x value, will be 0. My second one will be pi. Again, we're taking that increment, the distance between key points, and adding it. Add it again, you'll get 2 pi. Add it again, you'll get 3 pi. Add it again, you'll get 4 pi, which again should make sense that the entire period is 4 pi. So if you're starting at 0, you should be ending at 4 pi. And now let's draw here. So it's, it's definitely nice when you don't have fractions like that. It makes it go a little faster. So here's 0. Here's what I'm going to call 4 pi halfway through roughly you know you don't have to get out a ruler but you know you can certainly if you like pi 3 pi 
midline is y equals zero. So I don't really have to draw that. That's right on the x-axis. And now my amplitude, my amplitude is five. So that means I'm going to be able to go as high as five units above the midline, which means positive five. So if you like, you can just sort of, you can make the y scale five if you want. So I'm gonna go as high as five, and that means I'm gonna go five units below the midline, so as low as negative five. And now let's plot those key points. I got everything spaced out. The first key point for a negative cosine cycle is below the midline. So the midline is here at the x-axis, and I'm going to start five units below that. If, again, if you have trouble getting started, you can always just plug in zero into the function. Cosine of zero is one from your unit circle, and one times negative five is negative five. If you plug in pi, you know, the next key x value, you're gonna get zero. So this is why it's nice to trust the shape though, that the next key point will be at the maximum. Up there, the next key point will be right here on the midline. The next key point, the last key point, ends up where it started. That's how we know we've done one complete cycle. And then you do your best to draw a shape through it. You know, it should look like half of a, you know, half of a trough. Don't make it look like one big V. You're trying to make it look like a, a wave you do your best it's a little wobbly mine's not perfect but there we go and there's a, a negative cosine we saw a positive sign hopefully you got enough to to get you going if you had any questions but as always you know work hard let me know if you got any uh, questions or follow-up ideas have a good day